Checking in on commodities, we're going to look at the weekly time frames for dollar, gold, miners, oil, natural gas. So starting off with the dollar, they continue to hold this weekly uptrend. So another higher low has been established at 95.82. And just like that, we're right back testing our key resistance, which at this point is a triple top. So obviously very important to be watching 97.71. And it is a triple top almost to the penny. But very clearly, that is resistance. If we get over 97.71, we're looking up at 97.87 and then all the way up to 99.89. So there's space for the bulls if they can get over the upper 97s and we'll be looking for continuation of this move. In my opinion, what we're going to talk about in gold here in just a minute on the monthly time frame, it's going to be key to be watching the dollar on the monthly time frame, which is maintaining another higher low and it's looking for continuation here. And you can see the lack of resistance as far as the monthly time frame goes all the way up to 102. Too. So if we get this bull break and get follow through up into the 98 to $100 range, in my opinion, that's going to lead to further gold consolidation on the monthly time frame. But as of right now, the daily chart, we were extended when we headed into resistance. So not surprising that we rejected from it. We had seen a bunch of green in a row. So now we're pulling back and we're going to look for a daily higher low to form and anything above 95.82 will give us that higher low. So bulls have a ton of space to work with. And then we'll see if they can break that resistance level in the next coming week or two. So what this means with gold, this is gold's monthly time frame. This is a pattern that we should all be watching because it's been developing for years. And when you have a pattern that's developing for years and it's continuing to tighten up over that time period, you know that when the break occurs, it's likely going to result in some significant follow through. If the pattern's lasting two years, we can look for the break to potentially follow through for a year or two itself. So here we have the low of the pullback at 1046. High of the bounce, higher low, almost a double top. It's a lower high, another higher low, another lower high was just set at 1346. And now the question we have is, is this weekly or excuse me, is this monthly chart a bull flag ready to break these resistances and head up to 1400? Or are we going to pull back more to the middle of this range down to 1250 and to have this maintained as a tightening monthly equilibrium pattern? So zooming into the weekly time frame, it's a bullish reversal candlestick on the weekly. And what this bounce is going to tell us is the most likely scenario for how the monthly chart is going to play out. If this weekly bounce makes it up to 1320, that's a significant bounce that's going to create space that will allow the bulls to potentially form a higher low after the bounce and then try and change the weekly trend, which would look to confirm the monthly bull flag. If, however, this bounce only takes us to perhaps 1310, and then we drop down to a weekly lower low confirming the weekly trend change, that's the scenario where we get a monthly equilibrium. And that would tell us that this monthly pattern is probably going to play out through all of 2019 and not get a break until the end of the year or maybe in the first half of 2020. So this weekly time frame over the next two, three weeks is going to be very telling as to what's most anticipated. And the dollar is going to give us clues because like I said, if the dollar breaks 98 and heads up to that lack of resistance area, that's likely going to result in gold heading back down and potentially for that lower low if we break 1280. So those are the two scenarios to be watching. Again, this is one of the longer term patterns where I am just scouting this and waiting for the gold monthly break to take place sometime in the next year or year and a half. And then that's going to be a significant signal when it does happen. So the miners on the weekly time frame, they are still forming. Well, actually, I take that back. So we did lose the higher low pattern on GDX because we had this bull flag and continuation, and then we lost that support. So if we zoom out and look at the monthly time frame on these miners, they are looking like if this monthly bull flag follows through on gold, the miners are going to be looking to head back up towards the highs of early 2016 which would obviously be very, very beneficial for the bulls. The monthly time frame at this point was just a straight bounce from the low, and now we have a potential monthly bull flag trying to form just like the potential monthly bull flag of the dollar, So, or I should say of gold. So gold and the dollar are the key to determining what's most likely for these miners. On the daily time frame, we can see the miners formed a little higher low and then a bull break, and really it's the same thing. The gold on the weekly chart... How hard of a bounce are we going to see? Is the bounce going to create enough space to form a higher low and try and shift this momentum fully back to the bulls? Or is the bounce going to top out and then drop back down towards lower lows? So in my opinion, the miners right now are looking a little bit stronger on the weekly time frame than gold is. You can see gold has this long lower wick and closed up near the high of the week, but still compared to where we came from, it's a pretty decent distance. Whereas the bull miners closed for the seniors here halfway up the candlestick from last week. And if that were the case for gold, 
we would be up a little bit higher, probably another $10 higher or so. So this tells me the gold miners are performing a little bit better than gold itself. And if we just compare it to GDXJ, very similar. So a significant bounce, the daily time frame shifted that momentum. We didn't get the higher low that GDX did. So GDX was a bit of a more clear setup forming that higher low and then seeing that higher high follow through. But it's a similar bounce on these junior miners. And again, it's how much follow through are we going to get on this bounce to determine, is it likely that the size of the bounce is going to create enough space to allow for a higher low in any consolidation? So most important for me is this coming week, is the dollar going to break 97.71 with convincing follow through? If it does, that is going to increase the odds for me that the monthly chart for gold is not a bull flag. So combining these correlations, going to help to give us the clues of what's the most likely scenario. Oil on the daily time frame, big save by the bulls on Friday. So we broke key support levels. And when we break key support levels and do not get follow through, we zoom out and look for the potential of a flag. So this is still very healthy weekly consolidation. And we're going to be watching oil for potential correlations with what the market is going to be doing. So the market saw its first start to weekly consolidation. And the question right now is spy on the monthly time frame or excuse me, on the weekly time frame, going to form a bull flag and look for continuation. And I think oil is going to try and give us some clues here. But the bottom line is this four hour bounce on oil was very significant. And I passed up this oversold bounce opportunity Friday morning. And the reason I did was because the five minute time frame, I didn't like how we were having this slow action right here heading into the open. So I didn't like I, I like oversold bounces when they're a waterfall and we're very extended. The hourly time frame was a waterfall and very extended, and I was putting too much emphasis into the five minute time frame for that trade setup. So congrats to the bulls that did take that oversold bounce. It was very significant. And the question is, can we break the daily lower highs? 57.85, lower high at 57.17, lower high at 56.96. So clear lower highs, keeping the bears in control at this point of that pattern. But again, now let's see with this long lower wick, can the bulls carry that momentum into the coming week? And can they break the daily lower high pattern? I would expect an equilibrium on the four hour time frame to form from here into early next week because we have our high of 56.96, our low of 54.50. That's a ton of range and a ton of volatility. And after high volatility scenarios, that's when our equilibriums are most, most likely. So we're looking for a lower high compared to 56.96. Then we'll look for a higher low compared to 54.50 and a break of the tightening four-hour equilibrium, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Natural gas. Still holding on for these bulls. The daily higher low established, but we didn't get follow through convincingly to end the week. So now 2806 is our most important daily support level, and our key resistance is a double top at 2889. Have to break 2889 to get follow through. If we see a bear break of 2806, the odds that our weekly lower high has been established will increase, and we'll be heading back down to the 270s. If we get a bull break of that double top, we're going to be looking up towards $3, and this weekly bounce will not be done just yet. So probably Sunday night into Monday morning, we're going to get a break of one of the other of these tight ranges. We've been trading within this range now for five days in a row, and that's going to dictate pretty much the momentum for where we're headed next week. So that's what we got on the commodity front. Certainly some nice setups. And again, this is one on gold that you just put on the back burner and watch this monthly time frame and get comfortable with the miners because this kind of setup, when it finally breaks, is the kind of setup that we look for significant follow through whatever direction it does break. So thanks again. We'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your weekend. So chapter six of the adventure, we had headed west, we hit Boulder, and I was staying with that woman, got the house sitting gig for a month, and I actually did trade a bit when I had that house sitting gig because I had stable internet and I had a routine and I could be more focused on it. So I was still trading penny stocks at that point. This was maybe five, six years ago, and I had a couple weeks until I started house sitting, so I explored Colorado. That's the kind of green you want to see, tons of places to camp, tons of things to see, Utah and Colorado is a great chunk of land, and I haven't explored northern Utah. I wanted to. I had a road trip that was planned through northern Utah, through the northwest part of the country. I'm going to have to put that on my next to-do list later this summer. First, I'm going to be going back to Colorado in May, so I will bring my camera. All these pictures are with my phone, but I'll bring my camera, and I'm going to explore a bit more of Colorado and see some shows at the Red Rocks and have some fun but that's for another time. So this time around, plenty of places to camp. My favorite part about Colorado is that there are rivers, so many places coming off of mountains. And so that made two things very easy. Number one, getting the fresh water and 
uh, filtering it to drink. And then number two, being able to have things. You don't want to be, you know, have a cooler and have food that needs to be kept cool when you're road tripping across the country. It's just constantly needing ice and then those plastic bags. And it's just when you have ice cold water coming off the mountain, I would just pull over and fill up my cooler with cold water and then put stuff that needed refrigeration in it. And then, you know, 12 hours later, 20 hours later, I can just dump that water out and refill it with other cold water. So the water in, in Colorado is not for swimming. You can jump in and enjoy it for a brief amount of time, but it is very cold coming off of those mountains, especially in May and June. And I believe it was June now, heading towards July. But tons of great places to camp and lots of solitude. My favorite part about getting to a place that was a couple miles into the trail and had a nice clearing like this where you know it's just a lake and, and the forest is knowing that at about 4 or 5 p.m., no new people are going to be getting up to that spot. And that's because you can't hike up there and have enough time to get back before it's getting dark. So there's this this lull time before it gets dark where everybody is stops coming up. And so you have it to yourself during that dusk time when the sun's going down. This is the baby elk that I snuck up on. And again, it's just just being still and very slowly moving. It's just a game of you know, watching animals and trying to get close to them. There were no mothers or fathers around, which was good. <laughs> so there's plenty of spots like this all over. And I can't stress enough how if you go to freecampingsites.net and you look at BLM land, and BLM land is the same as National Forest Land to a certain degree. It's government owned. There's very little regulation on camping in terms of where you can camp. And it's just this big public lands that we have you know, to take advantage of. This, I believe, is getting towards Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the spots near the entrance. These are marmots, so pretty much a giant squirrel, if I had to describe them, somewhat like a raccoon, but they would live under the rocks, and you could tell what rocks they lived under because the rim around it was all bright green and lush, and the grass, you know, immediately after the rocks was a little bit dry and arid. And that's because of their waste. They just pop out of their hole and they go to the bathroom and that, you know, fertilizes all the plants that are around their rock. So you can tell where they live and they were curious and friendly. If you pee on a rock, they really enjoy the salt and the water and they'll run and lick it up. And they, they, their lives, I mean, they just live in areas like this where they, that's all they know. That's their life. They sit on their rock and they overlook the expanse. There would be times where I would be alone in the spot and I would sit there and a marmot would jump up on his rock and he'd just be observing everything with me and just hanging out in the dusk. And they get curious if you don't move. So if I sat there for an hour, he might, you know, get used to my presence and come and check me out and see what's going on once he realizes that I'm not a threat. So that's the start of Colorado. We'll continue going westward over the Rocky Mountain National Park. Looking forward to going back there again in May and open to any suggestions of places. I'm probably going to hit up Telluride, Steamboat Springs, and Rocky Mountain National Park, Boulder. I'm going to see Papadocio in Red Rocks. I got a buddy in that band and Random Rab and Polish Ambassador opening up. So that should be a fun show. That'll be in a few months and I'll be sure to bring you all along. So have a great rest of your day and we'll see you over the weekend.